Hello, everybody. I am Dan Wood with draft to digital uh, going to talk today about marketing on a shoestring budget. Uh, originally, uh, Kevin Tomlinson, who is our director of marketing, was going to give this presentation. And he is also an author like you. Uh, but he had a, a conflict come up, so Craig asked me to take over. And I was a little bit hesitant at first because I am not a writer myself. But over years, I've been coming to these conferences and talking to people uh, from different points in their career uh, and hearing what's worked for them. Uh, you know, I've seen many people that had just started out and, and how they found success. And so I was like, well, I think I really can cover this subject. So these are all things that I've learned over the years from talking to people, uh, some people that had been veterans of the industry and writing books for 30, 40 years, some people who were just getting started. So I'm hoping this will help you no matter where you're at in your career. I want to start with a couple of points that I think uh, you, you just really need to keep in mind. And the hard truth is you do have to spend some money to make some money. I also want to just throw out uh, immediately the idea that your time is money. And so a lot of these tips I'm gonna be giving you are things when you don't necessarily have the cash flow to spend money on ads, like Google ads or Facebook ads, you can use your time uh, if you have that uh, to help get your books rolling so that uh, the hope is that you start getting money coming in and then you can start doing some of the different ads and different things that are out there. What I really hope today that you learn from this topic is just things you make, the choices you make now are going to help you um, spend a little less money and a little less time. And hopefully we're gonna help you build a foundation that's pretty solid so that when you do have the money start rolling in, you know where to put the, 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 the ad dollars and you're not wasting any money. Now, I also want to clear up, this is a session on, for anyone, any type of marketing, if you're in KU, if you're exclusive with Amazon, or if you're wide, I'm going to be covering a little bit of everything for people. So a few ideas on building the right foundation to start with, because if you don't have the packaging right for your book, no matter how much you do to get the, the word out there, uh, you're going to be limited, because if you don't have a few things correct, Readers aren't gonna know this is a book for them. I also wanna say, in the beginning, writing the next book is the best marketing you can do. So if, you only, if you're at a point where you've just written your first book, I really wouldn't spend a whole lot of time or money on marketing because real, realistically, with marketing dollars and ad spend, um, you need more books because you know, books don't have a huge margin on them. And with ebooks, you're generally going to be selling somewhere between $2.99 and $9.99. And so make sure you want to just like keep writing books and free up and spend most of your time on the writing. Later on, when you have a lot of books, then marketing can really, really help you take off. But writing is the most important part of all of this. The other part that uh, I think I see all the time is in the beginning, you want to stay in one genre. Uh, a lot of young authors want to genre hop a lot around. That's very, very tough because you are building a, a different audience uh, within each genre. There's not a lot of readers that are going from genre to genre to genre. Uh, I think a lot of authors tend to believe that readers are going to follow them just based on the author name. But most readers stick in one lane and read one type of fiction. Or, or they're looking, you know, in nonfiction, they're looking for the solution to a certain problem. I'm also going to recommend that you write in series. Series is kind of taking over the world. You know, we've got the Marvel movies. We've got endless numbers of reboots of old intellectual property. People just like staying with characters they know. Um, and so at the beginning, if you stick in one genre and write in series, it's going to make it so much easier for you to market. That being said, later on, once you're established, then you can go ahead and start playing around and having fun. But I know so many authors that started in one genre, uh, they started another uh, series in another genre, and now they're kind of scrambling to try to keep readers happy in both sets of genres. And 
it can also kind of confuse the algorithms at Amazon. Amazon is training their algorithm to direct readers to you. And so if you're in multiple genres, that could be difficult because they don't know if they should send fantasy readers your way or sci-fi readers your way. So if you get the packaging right, the retailers will do some marketing for you. And that's where those algorithms really come into play. Um, you want to make sure you're doing things to make sure readers are looking at your book, they're clicking on your book, and then that tells Amazon or Apple or Barnes and Noble kind of what kind of readers are gonna be interested in it and that your books are converting, so they're gonna show more people. Covers. I think covers are the most important thing you can spend your money on in the beginning. Uh, covers need to really reflect what the book is and it's going to be very genre specific. So oftentimes when I talk to authors who are just starting out, they feel like they want their cover to really stand out. They want it to be something that's like a beautiful piece of art that really perfectly depicts a scene within their book but you really don't want to do that. And I've seen many beautiful covers that just weren't great covers for selling a book. What the book cover is going to do is it needs to let the reader know exactly what sort of experience they're gonna get. And so you want to look at the top sellers in your genre, and then you want your cover to look mostly like those covers and stick out a little bit, but not a lot. Um, within any genre, there are certain tropes to the cover and so, you know, if you think about it, in fantasy, if it has dragons at all, you probably want a dragon on the cover. In mystery and thriller, you tend to have a, a recognizable uh, landmark from a city and then someone running on the cover. Uh, those, those tropes are there for a reason because they let you know, hey, this is the book just like that other book that I really, really loved. And so stick to those. There's also typography, so the font that you use, there are certain fonts that make sense for kid books, and there are certain uh, fonts that make sense for erotica. And so talk to somebody, if, if you don't understand what fonts they're using, you know, look at the covers that are the, out there that are selling, and then also talk to a professional. At the beginning, you know, I, I would say I know many professional authors and people doing it full time are spending anywhere from 300 to a few thousand on their covers. At the beginning, you can really find some good covers working with artists from like Fiverr and a couple of other places. You can buy, sometimes a cover artist will have a sale where they've just made up a bunch of covers and will sell them. Um, and then they'll you know, work with you to adjust the title and whatnot. But spending money on a cover is one of the best things you can do. Within covers, you also wanna think about your personal and series branding. I think the best example I can think of with series branding is uh, the Harry Potter font. When you see that font, it instantly lets you know, oh, this is a Harry Potter book. Personal branding is going to be um, just like if you have a certain look that you go with for uh, all of your books to kind of unify them. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, an author will have multiple series, so they'll have multiple series brands. But you do want something that kind of ties it all together, and that might be the font that you use for your author name on the book. You want to stand out from the competition, I, I, like I mentioned, but just not a lot. You, you want to fit in. And always make sure that the cover works as a thumbnail. We're all moving more and more towards digital buying, be it print books or ebooks, uh, and now audiobooks as well. Uh, you want to make sure that if someone's looking at your book on their phone, because we're spending a lot of time on our phones now, um, that it looks good, that the font is legible, they can read the title, they can read the author name. Um, I've seen a lot of great covers that were well designed for a print book, but when you shrink them down, it just becomes a chaotic mess. And so always look at the, the cover uh, when you're working with the cover designer in a smaller format. The interior. You want to make sure that the inside of your book looks like a normal book and what people expect. There are a lot of great tools out there. I know a lot of authors that use Vellum. I know a lot of authors are starting to use Atticus. At the beginning, you don't need to spend any money on conversion. You don't need to hire someone to convert your book. It's really, really easy now. And there's a lot of great free tools. Uh, I want to mention ours, which I'm with draft to digital So we do free ebook conversion. You bring us a Word document. Uh, you, you upload it, and within seconds, you're going to get back uh, 
a file so PDFs for the print, Mobi, uh, which you only now use for side loading or sending like a free book to someone on an Amazon device, and then EPUB is the main ebook format. Uh, then Readsy also has their own editor. They provide that for free as well. We've both put a lot of work into the products, so they make nice looking ebooks. And the great thing about doing the conversion yourself is that you have control. You can make changes quickly because if you hire, if you continually are hiring people to do conversion for you, when you need to make quick changes or you need to add a link to the next book in your series, that's just gonna be more money and more time you're gonna spend working with someone else. So I highly recommend checking out those free conversion tools. The product description. So all the time when I look at some of these product descriptions, and that's gonna be like your blurb, or there's a couple of other words people will use for it, you often will want to just describe the plot of your book. And that's not at all what it should do. This is a sales pitch. And realistically, and if you've looked at Amazon recently, you know the reader is only going to see the top line or maybe two lines before it says click, read more. So you only have like one line to really capture their attention. And so you really, really want to jazz up your copy. You want something that will intrigue readers and get them to click that read more. Um, and then it needs to be a sales pitch. It needs to really give them an idea of what experience they're gonna get and then also uh, encourage them to buy the book or intrigue them enough to write the book. Categorization. So one thing we see a lot is that authors don't look at how they're categorized, all the different retailers, and the retailers all have different sorts of categories. Uh, many authors are familiar with Amazon, um, who has some of the most robust categorization. They have a lot of smaller um, categories. Um, there's a lot of different ways to, you know, you get to choose some categories, then there's certain keywords you can use to get into other categories. Getting into as many categories as you can and as niche uh, and specific to what your book is as possible is going to be the best. Um, you know, if you're writing a, a new adult romance, you want to be a new adult. Uh, you're going to be in whatever the, the, the top category, so romance as well. But if you just put yourself in the romance bucket, you're competing against every romance novel of all time. And so getting into as specific of a category as you can is going to help you a lot to get into the right readers who are looking for exactly what you're offering. Reviews. Reviews are super important. Everyone's always talking about how to get them. The easiest answer and the most effective one I know is you ask for them. Make sure you're asking for them because we forget to ask sometimes. You know, put an ask at the end of your book and let, just let them know how important reviews are to you and it's one of the best ways your readers can help your career. Ask on your social media every once in a while. Ask in a newsletter. A lot of readers just don't realize how important reviews are and what they, the impact they can have on your author career. Um, we see it when we talk to the merchandisers and the promotion managers at the different retailers and libraries. They're looking at those reviews to see, is this something we should include in a promotion? And so you wanna get as many as you can. There's also like the social proof where people just want to know that other people have read this and liked it. And oftentimes in those reviews, they'll kind of, they'll start using the words and the, the language readers use to describe a book rather than like sometimes as authors or publishers, you know, we think about our books differently. But going in and reading your reviews and trying to you know, stomach all the bad reviews, but look at the words they're using to describe your book because that's also going to help you with your ad copy later. Uh, so like, look at how the reader describes the feeling or experience they got from your book and pull that into your marketing efforts. One of the most important things, uh, and we've seen this over and over, last year uh, during the lockdown, we decided to offer some free one-on-one -on -one consultations with people. So me, Mark Lefebvre, and Kevin Tumlinson, we're just talking to people, and we, I would say we probably talked to hundreds over the course of the year, and we do 15-minute sessions. Most of the time, they, they would ask us questions about marketing. And over and over, what I found was when I looked at the end of their book, they didn't have any sort of ask to join an email news list or a newsletter. Email is so important and it, it seems crazy that email is still this major thing that we use for marketing, 
but it really is um, very important. You don't have, you want to make sure you control your relationship with your reader and have a way to communicate with them. You know, for a while people were doing that with Facebook groups and you know, you have, you can have your own Facebook group with an author page, but then Facebook took away a lot of the organic visibility there. And even though these people had joined your group and wanted to hear from you, you started having to pay to get your word out to them. With email, you're gonna control that forever. You can also take your email list from one provider to another, to another. So as you are growing and if you switch vendors, you can switch that around. But you wanna make sure that you can let your readers know when you have a new book at the very minimum. Um, you know, there are some authors I know that go out of their way to write more often and like share parts of their life. There are people that just, you know, will share when they have a new book. There's so many different ways to do your uh, newsletter, um, but it's really important you have one. Uh, later on, you're also going to be able to take, like when you're ready to do things like Facebook ads, you're gonna be able to take your newsletter list, upload it to a place like Facebook, and they will look for other people like those people. And so it'll help you find new readers because they will use all of that creepy data they've collected to find other people that have similar interests to the people who've already signed up for your newsletter. So, Feeding the algorithms. I mentioned earlier that you're really trying to encourage all the retailers to show your book more and to be marketing your book for you. Well, I, I think you've probably seen and you know if you're part of the 20 books group that writing books quickly is definitely a way to market yourself because you're feeding the algorithms. Amazon in particular favors new content seems to be about a 90 day window when you first release where your book gets a lot more visibility. And so that's why a lot of authors try to get to a point where they're releasing at least every 90 days. And of course there are people that are releasing monthly. What you wanna do is publish as quickly as you can without burning yourself out. Uh, you might want to just try to get a little bit quicker each time you publish, but refine your systems, figure out what works for you um, you know, take part in some of the sprints, and there's many great groups and books out there on how to write more quickly. But the quicker you can write, the easier marketing is gonna be because those algorithms are gonna be working for you. Networking with the industry and your peers. And so you're here at a conference, you've made a really good choice. I know so many of my friends that were just starting out had owed their early success to, they spent a couple of years coming to conferences, they got to know people, um, you know, frequently here at 20 Books, you will have reps from Amazon, from Apple, from Google Play. Getting to know those people is going to help your career later. A lot of wonderful people, they're all people that love books, and getting to know your peers is going to help you with your marketing. And so I wanna talk first, uh, we're gonna go into free retailer promotions, and I'll share some of the different ways the retailers do this. Uh, I'm gonna talk about email swaps, collaborations, and book tours. I was kinda hesitant to use the word book tour because I don't want you thinking like, oh, I'm gonna have to go around to bookstores and all that. But it's really probably the most appropriate word uh, because we're gonna talk, you can do that. You can go around to, to bookstores. But in the digital age, there's now a lot of different places where there are content creators and people who have a platform that might wanna hear about your book. And so that's what we're gonna get into there. So free retailer promotions. Many authors don't realize that a lot of the major retailers have their own in-house promotions and they're free. Like you, you don't have to pay money to be in them. Amazon unfortunately is becoming increasingly more pay to play and so you've, they've got the Amazon ads. But especially with Apple and Kobo and Barnes and Noble, they offer all kinds of opportunities to get in front of their readers Generally, like when you're participating in one of these promotions, it's going to be some sort of price drop for a certain time. Um, but again, you don't have to spend any of your money up front to be part of it. And pre-order sales. You know, your first book, pre-order, you not, might not wanna bother with the pre-order, but as you start to release the later books, the retailers look at pre-order numbers to see, um, and they frequently will have different uh, parts of their website that are dedicated to coming soon or pre-orders. So if you do a pre-order, you just give yourself so many more opportunities to be in front of their readers. So some of the different types of promotions we've taken part in. 
free first in series. And Apple in particular likes those. And these are some examples of authors that we work with that got a free first in series listed. It's a really good strategy. Uh, often authors will feel weird about giving away this book they've worked on so long for free. But once you get to a point where you have four or five books, um, offering that free first in series is gonna bring in a whole new load of readers. And when we've looked at the numbers, the series that have uh, a free first in series sell and, or do revenue of about three times greater than series that don't. And so it's a really good way to get your book out there and the retailers uh, feature it to their, their uh, readers. Bundles. You know, I mentioned writing in series. I would say every three books or so, and it depends on how long you intend the series to go, bundle them together. You have another product, and there are things like Barnes & Noble has a bundles page that's just featuring bundles. Uh, Amazon and Kobo have both, or Apple and Kobo have both also had promotions that are just for people with bundles. And so if you have a bundle, um, you're going to be able to take part in more of these promotions. You're going to have a product that's a little bit easier to uh, do an ad for later with Facebook because a bundle is going to have a, a greater price. And so, uh, you know, a 290, like advertising a 299 book versus a 999 book is a little bit different. And so, uh, bundles are a really good thing. For some of the other retailer promotions, they give promo codes, which this is probably the, the best one and easiest one to participate in because you don't have to worry about Amazon price matching or wanting you to lower your price there. Um, basically, you, you agree to the retailer that if your readers use this promo code, they get a certain percentage off. Uh, there's buy one, get one type things. There's buy two, get one. Uh, Kobo especially likes that style of promotion. And there are sales price promos where you just drop your price. And like when you think, if you've heard of BookBub, BookBub is a sales price promo where they just ask you to lower the price to 99 cents or free or some, some, somewhere under around that price. Email swaps. So this is also one of the reasons you want to have a mail list is meeting some of your peers and that's gonna be people in your genre and especially if you can find people who have books as close to yours as possible because you're going to want to offer your reader an experience and their readers an experience that's very similar between the two books. And so get to know some of your fellow authors and then you just ask and like, hey, you know, I think my readers might like your books. I think your readers might like my books. Those newsletter swaps have been responsible for many people's early start and careers because Readers are always looking for more books. And no matter what, you will never be able to write the books as quickly as your readers will want to read them. And so working with other authors to help them find what they're looking for is gonna be a win for them and a win for you. Yeah, you, know, you want, like I mentioned, you really want to make sure that the swap is a good fit. Like just don't newsletter swap with people where it's kind of questionable or iffy. Um, because you're taking both their reader's trust and, and your reader's trust. Um, and if you give them stuff that they're just not interested in, then they're gonna be less likely to listen to you next time. Collaborations. So collaborations are a great way to also introduce your, your readers to other authors and vice versa for you to gain some new readers. Um, you want some more experiences. You see this all the time where authors will do like uh, just a really big uh, multi-box set, uh, you know, of all like dark epic fantasy reads or um, there'll be like the collaborations where authors will write in the same, uh, they'll get together and write in the same like location and books are similar. Um, collaborating with your fellow authors is such a great way to gain more readers and to um, just, I, I, I've seen a lot of groups where they will kind of have in jokes, like they'll write with each other and then they'll write, you know, some of their friend, like author friends into the books and readers love that kind of stuff and they look for it. So I encourage you to think about collaborations. I would be remiss if I didn't mention Drafted Digital has a payment splitting tool now. So we make doing collaborations really easy. You can do like, multiple author uh, box sets. You could do a co-author where two of you are writing. 
and we handle all the payments and all the tax stuff, so you don't have to worry about that. Because if you've talked to people in the past that have been part of these, it can be a nightmare sometimes, especially if you're working with authors all over the world. So now I'm gonna go on to networking with your potential fans. Uh, I'm gonna talk about content marketing, community participation, and book tours. So content marketing is a great strategy for nonfiction authors. Uh, if you've ever listened to Joanna Penn's podcast, I think that's a really great example of someone giving a lot of, of information to the community, and it helps her as she sells her nonfiction brand, and I'm sure she also finds some readers for her fiction as well. You know, she has the two distinct pen names because she does try to keep those separate. Um, a lot of that, again, is the algorithm stuff where you want to make sure Amazon is showing the right readers your books. Um, but Nonfiction, you know, if you are solving a problem with your books for people, put out as much free content as, as you can because they are gonna appreciate that and they are going to reward you with buying you know, your books or any other sort of uh, merchandise you might put out there. Fiction writers can also do content marketing. And some of the examples I thought of were, uh, there's a young YouTuber named Daniel Green who he just reviews fantasy and sci-fi books. And he's been doing it for a couple of years about six months ago, he self-published his first book, and it's a fantasy book. So he's been providing content that readers of fantasy are going to be interested in. And so just immediately was able to get you know, some traffic going to that book because he had been talking to people that are potential readers of his and was able to translate them from being people that watch his YouTube to buyers of his book. Another good example is the Lore Podcast, and I forgot the guy's name who does Lore Podcast but he is a horror writer. And so the Lore Podcast was such a great idea as a, a horror author, uh, because then you can go on and find people that are likely to like those spooky and creepy tales. Just think about what your potential readers like to learn about or like to talk about, you know, what they're fanning, uh, you know, becoming big fanboys or fangirls about, and try to lean into those topics and provide things they're gonna want to learn about. Community participation. I always tell people, be where your readers are. And so uh, a couple of examples, Reddit, Facebook, Discord now is becoming one, YouTube, and the TikTok. If you're looking for young adult readers right now, you probably want to be on TikTok because it's just blowing up. Uh, with Reddit, uh, I'm a big fantasy fan and a, um, a fan of like cosmic horror stuff. Most of the book recommendations I get now, I'm getting through subreddits on Reddit. And, like, for instance, the r slash fantasy subreddit uh, is one of the greatest communities for talking about books. Um, there are many authors that are there, and they're participating, engaging with the community. They're not just there to say, buy my book, buy my book. They're taking part. They're talking about their favorite fantasy. And then when they do have a new book release, they'll let people know. And people have grown to be huge fans through stuff like that. Um, YouTube, there, there's like BookTube and uh, BookTalk. They're just communities within all of these uh, social media platforms that love books. They're talking about your style of book. And you just want to find where those places are and you want to participate. You know, share with people because people desperately want to connect with creators now, especially now we have social media. They want to get to know you. The, the days of kind of the mysterious author writing off in like a cabin in the woods are mostly over. There are a few people who can get away with it, but just not that many. Book tours. So I mentioned earlier uh, Joanna Penn's podcast. There's been many people who have, um, you know, some of the speakers here who've had a new book or a new course, and they will go on and be interviewed by Joanna Penn. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about now, because I really think with book tours, you want to think digital first. Um, you want to look at what platforms can I like, go talk to that are going to be available all the time. You know, the funny thing is, uh, we've done like podcasts and everything. I have people that come up to me and tell me they just listened to a podcast I did four or five years ago, because um, people are constantly finding new podcasts and they're listening to the whole thing. Um, we have a bunch of YouTube videos up now, too. Um, trying to reach people and being where they are, trying to figure out who are the influencers and who uh, would be good. 
you know, like if you knew Oprah, Oprah, you know, can move a lot of books. And so let Oprah know if you have a book and you know her. Um, nowadays, you've got all these influencers on Book Talk um, who are getting people buying books all over the place to the point where like Barnes and Noble will have like tables that are labeled as Book Talk recommendations. And so think about who those influencers might be and if they might be interested in you. Um, reach out to them. You know, some of them will be looking for content. Some of them probably you won't hear back from, but you can always ask and you just be respectful when you ask and odds are something good will come of it. So a couple of tools that are out there that are either have uh, free versions or are really, really economical. Uh, I wanna mention our uh, Books to Read, which is part of draft to digital Book Funnel, who if, if you've not met Damon Courtney, he is amazing, he's here. Um, I think he's got a session right now, so like you might check out the video when you get home, because Book Funnel is a really awesome tool. And I'm gonna talk about a new one that I've been using to help with our marketing called Spark Toro that I think could help you. So books to read. One thing we found when we first started, and this is our ninth year as a company, uh, was most of the time authors would tweet out on their social media or tweet or Facebook, they would share a link to Amazon only because a lot of the retailers don't make it easy to find the link to your book. And then just going and collecting four or five different links or 10 different links for your book is difficult. And then you don't wanna like flood your Twitter or your Facebook with multiple posts with different links for different retailers. So we created one link. And so it kind of works like Bitly where it's like a link shortener, but you have one link. Uh, we go out and find the links for you. So you would give us like your Amazon link. We'll go ahead and use that to find the book on Apple, uh, on Kobo, on retailers all over the world, and then give you that link so you can share that. The first time a reader clicks on the link, it's going to give them a, like a list of stores and like their icons. They click on that, and then from then on out, they're gonna just directly be redirected to the storefront of their choice. So it just makes it really easy. It's a free tool. You don't have to use draft to digital for distribution. Um, if you're uh, exclusive with Amazon, it still works with Amazon and it, it provides a like, geolocation. So it's going to get them to the right version of the Amazon store. We also have landing pages and reading lists. And so uh, if you're just with Amazon, it's probably best to share your author page from Amazon. But if you are wide, you should use something like the books to read uh, uh, landing page because your readers are gonna wanna find your books at many different retailers. Reading lists, if you want to recommend some of your friends' books, or if you wanna recommend books about a certain subject, you can just put together a list and share that as a link, and it's a lot of fun to do. Book Funnel. Book Funnel can help you build your mail list by offering a free giveaway. So what the problem that Damon set out to fix was that authors will frequently want to give a free book or a novella to people to sign up for their newsletter. Um, but back in the day, you had to then email that book to people and then try to explain to people who are not so technically savvy how to get that book into their e-reading device of choice. Uh, Damon takes care of that for you for like a very good, reasonable price. Uh, Book Funnel has new tools where they can help you with newsletter swaps and finding other authors to do those swaps uh, with. Um, and so that just kind of, if you're, if you don't know the authors yet, like you haven't met them at a conference or in a Facebook group, uh, Damon can help you out with that. And then they help you find readers with group promotions um, and they just kind of coordinate certain types of group promotions and then you can choose to participate in them and hopefully that will help you uh, reach more people. Spark Toro. So it's a relatively new site. I, I believe about a year or two ago is when I first started using it. Uh, Rand Fishkin is, is the founder of it. Um, he was kind of a big deal in the SEO, so like enhancing your website to be as friendly as possible to Google. Um, nowadays, uh, Google does things that makes it very hard to optimize uh, for SEO. He moved on to thinking about how we are connecting and how content marketing is working and built a site called Spark Toro that can really help you find out what your potential uh, readers 
are talking about, what sort of influencers they're listening to. It's a really great tool. They offer uh, free searches, um, like a few free searches every month. So I would encourage you to like, just play around with it and see if it's something that you think will help you. But it can help you find out you know, what podcasts are your readers listening to? What uh, hashtags are they re reacting to on Twitter? Um, and those things can help you really target and do social media right. Um, I, I really have enjoyed it because uh, I've been thinking about content marketing a lot uh, because let's face it, it's really expensive to do ads and ads are becoming less and less effective over time. Marketing on a shoestring budget, free education. We are so, so lucky to have this community that is so sharing and you're here at 20 books so you're seeing all these different people that are sharing their strategies, they're sharing their tips. Um, just, it's a great, great community. Podcasts are gonna be one of the best ways for you to stay um, up to date in a very changing world. And then talking to your peers is gonna help you save a lot of money and not make mistakes because all this great information we're sharing with you is always changing. Marketing is just evolving and evolving. So podcasts. I've just listed a few here. I particularly recommend Creative Pen, uh, Mark Dawson's self-publishing show, Sutmore Book Show. These are all great podcasts that you should check out. You know, I, I, have, I probably listen to too many podcasts. I listen to just about all of these on a regular basis. But find which ones work for you because they share information that's up to date all the time. They bring in some of the most interesting people. Um, odds are you check these out, you're gonna find a lot of familiar faces and names from here. Community, uh, I really want to uh, particularly plug David Gogren, uh, his website, his newsletter, uh, he's got a YouTube. He puts out a lot of fantastic information on um, both pu the publishing industry but on marketing in particular. He's also really good about warning authors about scams because there are a lot of bad people out there that prey on authors because they know how much you want to succeed with your dream. And so I would follow him on social media. Uh, Reed Z and uh, uh, Ricardo Fayette over there, uh, they put out a ton of great content on their blog. They also have a newsletter. They have a bunch of free little courses to go into details about certain marketing. Best of all, he's got a new book that's called How to Market a Book. So I would check it out. It's free on all the retailers. So that's a really good resource. Uh, he and I also have been doing a clubhouse uh, every so often. Um, if you haven't been on clubhouse, it's kind of been fun. Um, just talking to different people in the industry and authors that we know. So really cool um, opportunity to hear uh, some of the stuff going on. And then Facebook groups. You're already a part of the 20 books group. Uh, if you are not exclusive with Amazon and you're like wondering how do I do better at Apple or Kobo, the Wide for the Wind group is really great. Uh, Mark Lefebvre is, is with Drafted Digital. He always shares what, when we can share about some of those retailer promotions I was telling you about. He shares in that group so people know and we'll go apply for them. And then Mark Dawson's group is also just absolutely wonderful. They have a lot of free content. And then they have, um, you know, if, if you do one of his courses, uh, even more access to different people. So you wanna network with your peers. At conferences like this, you hear a lot of great ideas. A lot of these marketing tactics are going to like, vary a lot from genre to genre. And that's why you wanna make sure you know other authors like you, and you're gonna want to talk to them and see what works for them. There's stuff like email uh, newsletter blasts, like, like BookBub. BookBub for some genres, it just kills it. For other genres, they just don't have as many readers. And so talking to your peers is gonna be the best way to know with that. Um, just ask them about their experience because it's gonna help you. Finally, once the money starts rolling in, I want to encourage you to reinvest in your future. Work towards being debt free, invest in more formats, invest your time and money in one new marketing platform and try, instead of trying to do everything all at once because you will burn yourself out quickly. And then fear of missing out or FOMO is the devil. And so you can be very, very distracted if you keep trying to do everything. Um, pick a few things and stick to them and get good at them. So debt free, when you f find success, don't go out and like quit your day job immediately. Don't buy a fancy new house or a fancy new car. 
I saw a lot of young authors do that because it was their first time really having money. What I would recommend you do instead is to work towards getting debt free. And it, probably as you start getting that income from your books, you should reinvest money into some of these other things I'm gonna talk about and also into paying off your bills because publishing, is, like every creative endeavor is a roller coaster. It's not like a steady, uh, you know, not linear growth. It's more like this and you just never know. You never know if Amazon is going to have a mistake and delist all of your books for a while. So what you wanna do is just make sure to make things as easy as possible and stress-free as possible and working towards being debt-free is gonna give you a lot of freedom. More formats. You want to get into all the formats you can as soon as you can. Because A, it just having all the formats looks more professional. There are a lot of readers out there that just won't buy a, a book in certain formats. So make it available in print, make it available in audio, and then make it available in, in digital or ebook. Ebook is the easiest because it's free, uh, more or less. Uh, with print on demand, it's now become where the prices for that are coming down rapidly. Uh, so it's pretty easy to get into print. Audio is gonna be the one where uh, there is a lot of expense and audio tends to be a, you know, like a 100,000 word book. It, it's gonna be about $3,000. And so audio will probably be the last one you get to, but audio books are booming, they're taking off. Stick to one marketing platform. So, you know, Facebook, or Amazon ads, I wouldn't try both at the same time. Try one, see if it works for you. Once you feel like you've mastered it, and you may never feel like you've mastered it, but once you feel comfortable, then maybe try something else. Then don't give in to FOMO. You don't have to do everything, nor should you. When you hear about a new social media platform, you should probably go out and grab whatever name it is you like to use to make sure someone else doesn't do it. But you don't have to do something on every platform. Pick the ones you like to be on, pick the ones you get, participate there. Be strategic about why, where you spend your time and your money, because your time is money, and you, know, you could be writing. So whatever you're doing with your time, you could be writing. Think about that, because I, I just see so many people um, end up wasting hours and hours on platforms where they're not really getting any traction. That is everything. I wanna thank everybody for coming. We do have what we call the Self-Publishing Insiders Podcast, or you can check us out on YouTube uh, and Facebook. Uh, especially last year during the lockdown, we interviewed so many different people from the industry. A lot of the people you're hearing speak here, a lot of friends we made along the way. Um, so please check it out, and uh, thank you. <laughs>